I masterfully debated whether or not to make this video. After all, I've already done upgrade videos for the previous free Ludia VStar and Gardevoir EX decks, but then I remembered that I liked money and decided to go ahead with it. When the Paldean Fates Battle Pass goes live on January 25th at 10 a.m. Pacific, the free decks will be Ludia VStar on the basic Battle Pass and Gardevoir EX on the premium Battle Pass, which should cost 600 crystals. They're both based on the World's 2023 list from five months ago, which predates 151 in Paradox Rift. The bad news is that you don't unlock any new unique cards for the free decks deeper into the battle pass, just hyper rare versions of existing cards, which means you'll need to cough up some credits to make any changes. The good news is, is that your toes are right there within finger's reach. If you're playing Ludia V-Star right now, you really only have two options, the version with Iron Hands and the version without Iron Hands. Regardless of which one you pick, you will need to craft some new cards if they aren't already in your collection. Those are one copy of Squatchabilly EX, one Mew EX, four Jet Energy, and one Luminous Energy, all for a total of 1,700 credits. And since the new Battle Pass should reward you with about 1,700 credits right off the bat, you can improve Ludia without grinding. All the other new cards should already be in your collection from the 2023 free decks, which I should mention will be rotating out in March. So if you've never played PDCGL, I highly recommend at least booting it up to claim all those free decks while you still can. For the Iron Hands build, I like the inclusion of Earthen Vessel, which discards a card from your hand and goes and gets up to two basic energy from your deck. It's more ways to put Archeops in the discard pile, and the basic energy build offers up the ability to attack with Luminion, Radiant Zard, and Iron Hands. Since this list essentially swaps out Squawkability for Iron Hands, it's only 1900 credits to add what you're missing. I also like this build of the deck because I have a smooth brain, and I maybe sometimes forget that Luminous Energy is useless when you have another special energy attached to the same Pokemon. The basic energy build is much more idiot-proof. I'll include lists for both versions of Ludia in the description, so you can easily copy and paste them into live and craft whatever you're missing. One great thing about Ludia is that it doesn't really lose much with rotation. Yeah, the single strike build is gone completely when all of the e-block cards leave standard on March 21st, but the colorless build gets to keep all of its main attackers. Really, the only major loss is Professor Burnett, which allows you to Luminion for the support or then put two Archeops directly into the discard pile. But rotation also giveth. Since Path to the Peak is rotating, you don't really have to worry about Ludia's V-Star ability being blocked. In terms of attackers, this post-rotation list still plays Snorlax, Weird Ear, and Mew. But depending on how things shake out, you may want to go back to the Radiant Charizard and Iron Hands EX builds. A new addition I didn't think about for Lugia is Fluttermane. With the Japanese rotation this week, Poke Book did a preview of some lists and included Fluttermane with Lugia. It's, uh, it's worth noting that they project both Lugia and Gardevoir to be B tier, so don't expect either of these to be amazing. Anyways, Fluttermane blocks your opponent's active Pokemon's ability, provided Fluttermane's in the active. It's arguably a weaker Klefki, since Klefki blocks all basic Pokemon abilities when it's in the active, but Fluttermane's added benefit is that it stops evolutions. So say you're facing Charizard EX. They evolve their active Charmander and, oops, no energy acceleration for you. Obviously Fluttermane can be played around by your opponent, but it's interesting nonetheless. And the attack isn't horrible, dealing 90 damage and spreading two damage counters. Another new addition you'll want to include is Mist Energy. When it's attached to a Pokemon, that Pokemon becomes immune to effects of attacks. So all of a sudden, Roaring Moon's Frenzied Gouging is useless, same with Sableye's Lost Mine. Finally, the Ace Spec. For most decks, just chuck in Prime Catcher and you'll be fine. But for Lugia, maybe Maximum Belt is a good idea. Boosting the damage you deal to Pokemon EX by 50, perfect for helping Lugia KO a basic EX. Realistically, to turn your current Paldean Fates build of Ludia V-Star into a post-rotation build, it'll cost around a thousand credits. I'll have plenty more videos about rotation and temporal forces as we get closer to the end of March, but for now, let's go to Gardevoir. With the release of Paldean Fates, Gardevoir EX gets one new card, Moonlit Hill. This stadium heals 30 damage from all of your Pokémon provided you discard a Psyche Energy from your hand. So while Lugia doesn't gain anything from a set with like 10 new cards in it, Gardevoir does. Aside from Moonlit Hill, the deck is practically identical to what it was back in August. Just add Jirachi, Screamtail, two Countercatcher, and that Moonlit Hill and you're good to go. You could also include Professor Turo's Scenario, as that allows you to put a Pokemon back into your hand, preventing any late game boss trap situations. 
But yeah, turning the free version of Gardevoir from August into a Paldean Fates build costs like 500 credits. And Gardevoir is definitely still a top deck right now. But then Rotation will slam it back down to reality like it's a Magmar getting seismic tossed by Ash's Charizard. On March 21st, Gardevoir will lose all of its E-Block cards, including Shining Arcana Gardevoir, Fog Crystal, Level Ball, Zation V, and Battle VIP Pass, making it a shadow of its former self. And Temporal Forces won't exactly be bringing the reinforcements. Yeah, Buddy Poffin is a good replacement for VIP Pass, putting two Pokemon with 70 HP or less onto your bench. But the strategy shifts from big damage with Baby Gardevoir and Zacian V to putting as much damage on Streamtail and Drifloon, all while you augment their HP with Bravery Charm, Luxurious Cape, and Hero's Cape. This is the list that Pokecabook is predicting for Gardevoir post-rotation. It focuses on TM Evolution to get your Curlia into play as soon as possible, since your turn 1 is all but guaranteed to suck. After that, use your low HP attackers to try and swing big, saving Gardevoir EX for key moments. Honestly, I haven't put too much thought into post-rotation Gardevoir. All I know is that it seems super underwhelming and won't be back to its former glory until a really good Psychic-type attacker is printed. Until then, we'll just have to remember these fond times we had together where Gardevoir was continually doing well in tournaments. To quickly wrap up, you barely need to spend any credits to upgrade the free Lugia and Gardevoir decks for the Paldean Fates meta. And in terms of which will be better in two months when rotation hits, that honor appears to go to Lugia.